Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're comparing fractions. This is a worksheet from mathdrills.com. This is a great concept. You're gonna be doing lots of this in middle school math and beyond. So let me break down probably the simplest way that we can demonstrate this principle. Now here we have two different fractions here and it's impossible to compare because they have different denominators. How do we know that um, how do we know that one is bigger than the other? Well, there are some tricks, like if they have the same number in the numerator and different denominators, we can tell here that this is actually going to be bigger this way. But sometimes it's not abundantly clear. Like sometimes it's a little tricky. So the best thing to do is to convert it so they have the same denominator. Now, you can find, uh, for example, the least common multiple. So if you've heard your teacher talk about that, that's a great way to do that. That involves... Uh, multiplying the prime factors of these numbers. I'm actually not going to show that way in this video because there's an easier workaround for that. Um, that will give you the simplest form quicker, but I think the easiest explanation is really just this. Check it out. So if we're looking for a common denominator, what we're looking for is something that 4 and 5 both multiply to give us. Okay? They both have to be part of the same factors of a number, 4 and 5, both factors of a number. So we can think, okay, uh, for 4, we have 4, we have 8, we have 12, we have 16. These are all factors of 4. We have 20. For 5, we have 5, 10, 15, 20. And what we're doing, we're like, oh, look, we have 20. So what ends up happening is we know that 4 times 5 gives us 20, and we know that 5 times 4 gives us 20, we ended up just multiplying the denominators together. That always works. So if you want to find a common denominator between two fractions, we simply just multiply the denominators together, and that will always give us a common denominator. Okay, So that's my kind of quick solution for this. It'll make it a lot quicker, I think. And let me show you how we're going to do that. Well, since we know that we're going to be multiplying this times 5 and this times 4, multiplying the denominators together. We also have to do it to the top. So actually, let me change color here just so you can distinguish the two fractions a little bit easier. So we multiply this one by 4 in the top and the bottom. Have to do it in the top and the bottom because essentially what we're doing is multiplying by 4 over 4, which is 1, which is a legal move to do. What color am I using? looks like this, dark red. Okay, so I multiply 5 by 5, 5 over 5. So in the top, I get 10. In the bottom, I get 20. We're going to see how this looks in just a second. So this fraction converts to 10 over 20. Then we'll go over to this green one. I have times 4 in the top. That's 8. Times 4 in the bottom. That's 20. So I have 8 over 20. And now take a look. This was the whole point. And this is why multiplying the denominators together is so useful. Because we get this common denominator. Now it's very clear to see that this one on the left is greater than... So we can say 2 fourths or 1 half is bigger than 8 twentieths or 2 fifths. Okay, or 2 fourths, I should have said earlier. Okay, so there's how we do that. So if we're looking at each one of these, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we want a common denominator. I need to multiply this by 3 and this by 3. How do I know I'm going to multiply that by 3? Because that's the other denominator. Okay, we can get a common denominator by multiplying the two together. Likewise, if I have this as a 3, I'm going to multiply this one by 6. And this one by 6. And again, why does this work? Because the common denominator is a denominator, a number that has both 3 and 6 as factors. Okay? And I'm going to explain. This is a great one to explain exactly what I'm talking about with that. Give me a second. So I'm going to go over here. And I have 6 over 18. Okay, sloppy 8, but you guys get it. Then over here, we have 9 over 18. So we have two fractions here, 9 over 18 and 6 over 18. It's easy to see that this one is bigger. Okay, So this one's 1 half or 3 6. This one's 1 third. Obviously, it's, um, it's, uh, the 3 6 is bigger, so that it's you know 9 is bigger than 6. It's obvious to see that. Now, what I'm saying is what the least common multiple method would give us is it would say we want a denominator of 12. So we would have... Uh, 6 over 12, and then 4 over 12. That's actually this, this most simple way we can find a common denominator. Actually, we can make it even easier. We can have a common denominator of 6. So we have 3 over 6, and then 2 over 6. So there's a simpler way to do it, but if I like the method I first described because you can just use that method every time, and it will work. Okay, 
You don't have to distinguish, okay, for this one, I saw that three was a factor of six. No, you can just jump right into it, multiply the denominators, and it works every time, okay? So I'm a big fan of approaches that work every time, so that's what I'm doing in this video. All right, now, multiply the denominators, okay? So for the first, for the four, I multiply by six, and the six, I multiply by four. And again, we have to have the same thing on the top and the bottom. We multiply, and what happens? We get six over 24, and for this one, we get... 12 over 24. So now we can clearly see that this one is bigger and we're moving on, okay? So that's all there is to it. All these are pretty much the same kind of type of numbers. I'm gonna switch to all the same color just kind of so it's faster for me to do these. So again, times five, times five because my number is five over here. And then times three, times three because my three is the denominator there. Now I know that this equivalent fraction on the left is six, nope, that's not a six, psych. It's 10 over 15, and then this one is 12 over 15. And look how easy it is to compare them. We see that this is 10, and this is 12. 12 is bigger than 15, therefore it's going this way, okay? And then some of these are might be equal. I'm trying to see off the top of my head if any of these are in fact equal. Not seeing anything readily apparent. Oh, here's one, one half equals one half. So there's one, but that's what you're gonna do with all of these. If you need me to do more, let me know, but I think this is pretty straightforward. Multiply the denominators. I'll do one more just for just for what have you. Multiply the denominators. Okay, make sure that you're consistent by top and bottom, the same number. Don't get a mistake of I almost just did and just do times two times two on both sides. No, nope, it has to be times five and then times two on this side. Okay, so times five times five on the top. So we get six over 10, five over 10. This one's bigger and we're done. Okay, so pretty simple there. Glad you took the time to click on this and watch it. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you next time right here on West Explains Best.